Hello everybody, Fiona Poultridge here again for another Artist Gang Tuesday for Donna Downey. And this week I'm bringing you an art journal page. Yes, an art journal page. Um, and I'm going to use one of Donna's stencils and one of her signature stamps. So the stencil I'm using is called Le Fleur. And it's a gorgeous vase. Vase? Vase. Vase. I'm going to say vase. It's a vase and it has uh, like a little bit of a tabletop with some writing in it. It's really cool. But what I wanted to do is what I wanted to make it look really rustic and um, like it was sitting on a shelf in a, an abandoned old house. I had this old piece of um, pattern 12 by 12 paper which seriously in a lifetime I'm never going to use because well I mean it looks like wallpaper. But having said that it's actually going to make really cool wallpaper in this art journal. So I'm just sort of trimming a little bit of the excess off so I can actually go around my jar. And I, I tried to be a little bit particular with it and then all of a sudden I realized that it didn't really matter because I was gonna rip it up anyway because I wanted it to look really old. Like, you know, those old houses. I don't know, I've never actually seen one. I've only ever seen them on the movies, but like they're meant to be these places where, you know, ghosts live and uh, nobody's lived in the house for years and years and years and the wallpaper's just like falling off the walls. I'm using a gel medium, just any gel medium, and I've just watered it down a little bit so that it doesn't dry too quickly. So that way I can manipulate this paper over the top. And I'll just stick it down really, really lightly. I don't want it to be um, overly adhered or else I'm not going to be able to pull up all the bits that I want to pull up to make it look really old. I've got a pair of scissors and I'm just trimming the edge, I'm trimming, trimming, I'm not really trimming at all, I'm kind of tearing the edge because I'm not a very straight cut so I tend to find that if I tear paper I, I do a much better job at that than I do cutting it. I do own a trimmer, I just don't tend to really use it for what it's meant to be used for. So I'm also running some water over the top of the paper. I mean, we all know how strong scrapbooking paper is not. So, you know, the instant that I put some water on it, we know it's going to break down. So if I just put some water over the top, you know, let it sit for a while, I should, should, this is, this is the key word, I should be able to tear it off so it looks like really, really old wallpaper. So I give it a little go here with my scissors just in case. Yep, bonus, it's going to work. That's what I need. How cool is that? Old wallpaper. So now I'm just going to do the rest of it. La, 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 fill it in, stick it down. I mean, the bits that hang off the edge of the page, you don't have to really worry about those. You can just trim them off later. And on this other side, it, I know it looks really piecey and like it's not one big piece, it's lots of little pieces because, of course, I didn't have another piece of paper the same. Um, but it doesn't matter because, look, this is what I'm doing to it. I'm going to rip it off. So where those joins are, as long as the lines are going the same way, it doesn't really matter if... Um, if it doesn't all fit together properly because by the time I'm finished with it seriously it's it's not even going to barely look like wallpaper or it's not going to resemble much in the way of paper at all. I get in here with a baby wipe because I find that it's starting to dry out a lot quicker than what I'd anticipated. Um, lots of tearing, lots of wiping with a baby wipe, a um, little bit more water over the top and I'm just grabbing little bits of it and like literally just pulling strings of it and just trim the sides off um the bonus is is this paper actually has a pattern on the other side it's one of the double-sided pieces and so when i do actually take quite a lot of the top paper off because i've used gel medium underneath i actually get a little bit of a transfer which looks really really cool because the other page like the page on the back is it's not the same as the front page but it's got very similar uh, rose pattern so it kind of blends in anyway you'll see when i on oh, this bit here i had to destroy because that's where the flowers are going to go but you can see on this side here when i start to rub with the wipe how the bigger flowers poke through behind from the transfer of the other side of the paper which actually looked really really cool i quite liked it so there you go old wallpaper all right so now i needed to add um, my flowers and this is a piece of waxed paper i always used wax paper as my palette because it one it's a nice flat surface but two it um it dries and you can just peel it off these are the daniel smith watercolors and i'm using a bit of a combination here i've got some quinacridone rose which is the bright pink color and then i'm adding some 
Amazonite genuine Am Amazon yeah it's a really pretty blue green color <laughs> um, Amazonite genuine genuine Amazonite that's the one so you knew I'd be able to get there eventually and I'm literally just stamping over the top because I put that greeny blue together with that beautiful rose color I've got a, a bit of a crossover with a, a mixing of the colors and got a, a lovely purple now when you stamp with watercolors you never get a really clear image it's always a bit muddy so I, I get my paintbrush out and I uh, use the stamp packet as a bit of a guide and just fill in those little bits and pieces that got missed when I stamped or just to make it a little bit richer in color um, the Daniel Smith watercolors are so pigmented it's incredible so you just need to keep adding it on top of each other over and over again and uh, you get these really deep rich tones which is exactly what I wanted so next up I um, add some watercolor to the bottom as well because remember we've got this little ledge that we're going to um, pot the stencil over later on down the track but I thought I'd make this a beautiful lapis lazuli genuine color this is the this is the blue the bluey color and um, I mix it with a little bit of the green as well and I also add a little bit of the shadow violet I'm coloring in the vase here even though I'm going to put the stencil over the top the stencil has this beautiful squiggle line uh, through the middle of it which I'd really love to stand out in this um, this beautiful genuine Amazonite green color um, I, it didn't quite work how I wanted to, to to begin with so I had to go back in and add that color later but you'll see that further on down in the video good old titanium buff here in the background I decided that the uh, white paper that I'd pulled well from where I'd pulled off the 12 by 12 pattern paper had left that real white paper background and it looked a little bit too white so with the um, the buff titanium I can just add it to the background um, as much or as little as I like and it sort of makes it look a bit grungier especially in amongst those flowers it makes that purple color really pop I used to use watercolors in my work all the time and then I kind of had a bit of an acrylic moment where I was just using acrylic paint constantly but I'm really excited to go back and use the watercolors again I'm, I'm finding that it's it's a lot of fun um, now I pop the stencil back over the top because this is the plan right from the beginning and I've got some um, just a little tiny bit of golden acrylic paint here I've got some neutral gray and some Payne's gray and I'm sort of sort of mixing them together but not really because I didn't want it to be too dark um, and I'm also very aware of the fact that I've got the light coming from the left hand side in my head so on the um, right hand side it needs to be a little bit darker so that's what I've got the um, neutral gray for on the right hand side just to lighten up that Payne's gray and then of course to go across the bottom because it's sitting on a shelf I love um, when you pull this stencil off how Donna's created this sort of loose handwriting that says Le Fleur if you look really really closely that's what it says um, but I'm just going to use it across the whole bottom like I'm not going to do another vase I'm just going to use the bottom of it so it's sort of like a like a tabletop going right across and it actually looks um, quite awesome uh, right across even on the other end to put a little bit on the other end as well so this is where I um, touched up a few of the flowers and then I thought oh I probably should add just a little another section like it was just missing it had a little gap where I wanted to put some extra flowers in so I just grabbed my paintbrush and added the paint directly onto the stamp and voila look at that perfect it was the perfect little piece I just want to use that quinacridone rose and make that really really rich around the neck of the vase I'll also go in with the brush and this is what I was talking about with that um, green in the background and I go in with the brush here um, with the Amazonite Genuine and actually add that into that little crack in the vase because I really do like that green color I think it brings out a bit of the mossy green color in the background and, um, and it just makes that vase pop a little bit more now I'm starting to think okay so it's just a really solid color my vase I need to add some some shading and some toning to it um, and this is where I end up using some of the neutral gray and the Payne's gray sort of mixed together to give a bit of a shadow along that bottom right hand corner of the vase 
Um, again, I said that my light was coming in on the left hand side. So I want to make sure that the left hand side of the vase is left quite light, not white, but much lighter. Um, and the right hand side of the vase, I need to add my shadow to. And so this is where I'm mixing a bit of the buff titanium buff color um, in with a little bit of the Payne's gray and the neutral gray just to add some shadow on that right hand side where there wouldn't be the sun coming in and I don't know how else to explain it so as if it was sitting on a window ledge in the window window ledge a window ledge and the sun is coming in through the window so it's going to be darker on the side where there isn't any light now I dry it with my heat gun um, because I want to actually draw around it with some lead pencil and that's really hard to do on paper if it's still wet. This grip that I'm using here is sort of a, it's a more of a loose grip. It's kind of where I hold the very end of the pencil so I don't have as much control when I'm writing or drawing. And then I get a little bit more of a sketchy feel to, to the pattern that I'm making with the pencil instead of it being quite precise. You're here. <laughs> See, bit too wet, needed to dry. And now look how talented I am. I'm actually drying and drawing at the same time. It's a drawing, drying time. Look at that. So I've sketched quite considerably around the outside of the vase because I really wanted it to um, start to stand out so um, it didn't just meld in with the table at the background. A little bit of writing along the edge and it's uh, pretty much almost done. The only thing that I wanted to add was a little bit of shade and shadow where the wallpaper meets the shelf or the top of the ledge, whatever you want to call it. And so what I actually did was I mixed together some of the um, the Quinn Rose and the Shadow of Violet and the greens and the blues and I mixed it all together and then I also added it in with a little bit of the grey. So you've kind of got this shade colour that you've created with all of your colours all mixed together at the end. Makes a really good shadow colour and bring out the big guns. Not mucking around with this little brush, bring out the big brush. And I do a little bit of a border around the outside of the page and along the bottom, you can see the shadow starting to, to build up now. And then finally, I just come in with a little bit of the titanium buff and uh, make sure that that other side is got that little bit of light on it. Did any of that make any sense? <laughs> Actually, you know, that's rhetorical. Don't answer it. I'll see you next time. Bye.